This week, we're putting on our next-gen specs, strapping on our brain controls, and entering the metaverse. Just a normal day. But maybe one day they'll be good enough to interact with the metaverse. And speaking of interacting, Osmanic Bell has been trying a whole new way of controlling things with his mind. So here I am, with a strange band strapped to my head, looking very proud of myself for switching on a toy lightsaber. <laughs> but so what? Well, whilst it looks like a poor man's Comic Con, I'm actually here to experience the future of tech. It's all part of a new industry that wants technology to interface with our brains. What could go wrong? But whilst I'm playing with Star Wars toys, Elon Musk is planning to create superhumans by surgically implanting chips in their brains. They've already released footage of a monkey playing a video game with its mind and a real-time link to the neural activity picked up from a chip implanted in a pig's brain. But now you don't need brain implants to control machines. Headsets like this let you control devices just by concentrating on them. So all you need to do is strap on some headgear and use the power of your mind. Come on. <laughs> In principle, it's quite straightforward. The EEG sensors on this headset measure electrical signals in your brain, deciphering two mental states, your focus or calmness. Once you reach a threshold for either, an action is triggered. All right, come on, fan, switch you on. <laughs> I switched on the fan. It's like technology telekinesis, isn't it? That's amazing. Yes, of course, we'll get to a point where we can say things like, like turn the lights off and turn the lights on. But to me, that's never been what's exciting. By, by focusing on simply moving things with the mind, I think we take away from the real power of the technology, which is being able to learn about our minds, being able to strengthen our mental faculties, rather than just being able to do things so that we have to do less. The number one benefit we can bring to society and to youngsters and the next generation is consciousness of mind we have achieved far greater than any other technology or previous generation. Much of the brain-computer research has traditionally been done to help people with restricted mobility, and the breakthroughs prove that this could be a game-changer. But now there are a whole host of headgear-based neurotech companies springing up in the consumer space. And one of those is French startup Nextmind, who have created a headset that lets you control computer interfaces just by thinking about it. So really simply, this is an EEG sensor that sits at the back of your head. It measures the electrical activity in the visual cortex and detects what you're looking at. The visual cortex is the part of the brain that processes what we see. When you're looking at specific points on the screen, the sensor detects that increase in visual concentration and communicates what button you want to push. A few demos show you what's possible. Ah. I can blow up enemy squares in games and use my mind as a television remote control. But the simplest demo actually had the greatest impact. You're asked to enter a pin number just by focusing on the buttons to click. And the feeling of control is astonishing. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Where I see it really like totally exploding is with the combination of AR. So in a few years from now, we will have AR glasses like your glasses right now. They're gonna have AR and they're gonna allow you also to be in symbiosis, in immersion with the environment by basically linking your brain directly to the virtual events, to the virtual contents. And then you will be able to basically control anything virtual, anything augmented uh, directly with your brain. I drafted in my colleague, Paul Carter, to get his thoughts. Oh, go on. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Get some funk on it. So you're actually doing this? Yeah. I think so, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> this is awesome. And it turned out that the key takeaway was to not put the headset on too tightly. My head actually feels numb. I feel like you cut <laughs> off the blood supply. Ow. 
Do you know what? Oh god, I... the top of my head's numb. I'm gonna get pins. And... <laughs> I'm gonna get pins and needles in my scalp. <laughs> in terms of what this this might offer people with with you know restricted mobility, who who, who can't who can't move, can't use their arms, and, and need new ways to to interface with technology, then look potentially this is absolutely extraordinary. Um, does it need a bit of work? Yes, but I'm tempering that with the fact that I've just sat here and controlled things with my brain, and that's pretty incredible. But despite some amazing applications, there could be a dark side to this technology. The problem comes when we don't just measure the activity in the brain, but we try to directly influence it. That means we could do things like read someone's thoughts, or change their perception of reality, or even make them act against their free will. My um, biggest worry is mental privacy. You could imagine using them for interrogation, for example. They ask a question and just by the image that the person recalls, they can figure out what the person is thinking. Uh, technology companies ha have jumped into neurotech in a big way. Uh, also means that uh, they're very keen on getting their hands on, on mental data, on, on neural data. And I think that should be protected. It may sound far-fetched, but Elon Musk is already working towards writing to the brain to augment human knowledge. And Dr. Yuste has taken control of a mouse's mind. Now he's campaigning for ethical frameworks and strict regulations. Uh, this type of technology is so powerful. Uh, this goes to the heart of what makes us human, which is the human mind. Uh, this is the first time that uh, that humanity has technology that enables you to directly tap into the mind. But this is not uh, another little uh, privacy issue. No, this is the, <laughs> the, the, the mother of all privacy issues. This is your mental privacy. It's just not going to work, is it? So whilst there's a danger that our brains can be manipulated in the future, <laughs> if my experience of mind control is anything to go by, we should be safe, at least. For now. That was Oz. What a fascinating topic. Fascinating but frightening. I know. What do you think about it? Let us know your thoughts. Thank you. And that's it for this week. As ever, you can keep up with the team on social media. Find us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook and Twitter at BBC Click. Thanks for watching and we'll see you.